What is the federal government of Nigeria's much touted energy transition plan about? Nigeria's vice president recently had a grand tour of the United States over this energy transition plan. And the president of the country is talking about its job creating potential. We'll discuss this ahead on the breakfast. And also on the breakfast, the international break is upon the football world. And Niger's Super Eagles are not left out. We'll preview their upcoming friendly match with a sports analyst. And also, we have a usual segment looking at the big headlines on the front pages of uh, National Dailies today. We'll look at some of the big stories and uh, analyze a few of them. Back, it's a brand new day, a Friday, and of course, reaching you live from our studios on Victoria Lagos. The breakfast is live on Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartels, and I am Messi Ebopo. It's good to have you join us. Fantastic, as usual. We start things off with a, a top trending segment where we're looking at the latest uh, trending issues. So we take them from a uh, social media, bring them on air, and of course, uh, look at what everybody's talking about, provide a bit of insight and analysis right here. But we have interesting conversations. Uh, Mercy, Mercy, you're looking quite brilliant this morning. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic indeed. All right. You too. I uh, mean, your face looks quite different. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had some makeup today. <laughs> Interesting, Mary. Messi, Messi lent me a makeup artist. But I'm um, <laughs> talking about uh, um, looking brilliant. Um, you know, brilliance is always talked about also when it comes to academics. And um, the academic qualifications of the uh, presidential candidates, uh, so by so far uh, approved and, of course, uh, announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission. And I didn't leave anyone out. All 18 of them uh, were published in that INEC list. We've been looking at presidential candidates so far. We've not dived or delved into the governorship and other candidates. But uh, one of the controversies, uh, controversial candidates is uh, Peter Gregory Obi. Peter Gregory Obi is the presidential candidate of the Labour Party. And um, he seems to be a rising uh, force uh, who might, might make a big, big, big impact uh, more than a splash in the next uh, election. Um, his supporters are quite vocal on social media uh, and of course, even in, in, in the public space, wherever you go, you have a lot of his supporters. Seems to be uh, quite a wave. They even have a name for themselves, the Obedient Movement. Um, really a rising force in Nigeria's politics as we speak ahead of the 2023 elections. Well, um, he was sure to get attention and get tongues wagging when um, his own, his own um, column, on that uh, spreadsheet released by the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, for the candidates uh, in the presidential election, his own column, when he looked at the ed educational qualifications, it had just uh, a degree written there. There was no talk of whether well, it's a degree, a BSc, MSc, what exactly the degree was about. Um, we, we, you know, we talked a bit about this yesterday on the program. And um, it led to some questions being asked uh, by uh, supporters of his opponents, you know, saying, uh, what exactly is going on? He doesn't have a, a degree, and that's why uh, nothing was written there. He has only a school certificate. And, of course, our guests yesterday morning on this uh, discussion, we had a wide-ranging discussion on the uh, announcement by INEC, said probably it could be an issue of um, computation uh, by uh, INEC staff, you know, because you can see some of the candidates had uh, the, the details of their master's or PhD uh, stated. For instance, Bola Metinibu, they wrote uh, that he had a, uh, a degree in accounting. Um, Rabi Musa Kwanko, so one of the few, very few PhD holders, had a PhD in water, but they didn't even put a full thing there. So <laughs> I guess, you know, you know, he was conjecturing, saying probably it was uh, as a result of maybe poor or lazy computation by Nick. But um, the, the supporters of, of, of PWB's opponents said, hey, this is an issue here. He didn't, he didn't submit his certificate. Uh, he has no uh, bachelor's degree. And that's why they wrote, uh, you know, GCE, or is it a YEC? No, I think GCE, and uh, 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 degree. Because if he had a degree submitted, he would have, they would have written it, that he had a degree, maybe the MSc, sorry, a BSc in this, that, that nothing was written. But... His supporters were not going to take this keeping quiet. They were not going to take this lying low. Um, they had to look and dig out uh, uh, pictures of copies of his 
um, university degree. Not just that, that is uh, from um, University of Nigeria, Unsuka, UNN, Unsuka. They had to dig that out. Not just that, they also dug out his NYSC certificate and uh, the published it online. It was quite interesting um, to see coming days after Anak released the names of uh, candidates. Um, so his university degree, his NYSC certificate are now in the public document. I'm even looking at uh, a copy of it. Uh, still, some persons raised the uh, pig holes in his university certificate. Mercy uh, said, oh, okay, you've published his university certificate. Um, I think Oseloka Obaze is an aide to Peter Obi. He published uh, Peter Obi's uh, university degree on his Twitter account on September 21. Uh, that's about two days ago. Um, but some people said, hey, we're not taking this. Look at it there. That um, people went to calculate the date. Mercy. People opened the, open their phone calendars and had to calculate the date, particular day this was issued. And, I mean, if you look at the 15th of uh, December to 1984, uh, 1984, as it says, you may not really, you know, guess. You, I'm sure, can you tell what day of the week, of the week it was? You can't. But... Some opponents of Obi actually, or supporters of his rivals, went to dig out the date and said, oh, it's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. Ah, this must be fake. <laughs> it must be a doctored degree certificate. How can you receive a degree on Saturdays? Do the universities work on Saturdays? You know, and his supporters made to say, oh, uh, that's a wrong assertion. You know, your degree is given to you probably. They'll date it on the convocation day, uh, some people said, oh, they attend UNN, they attended UNN, that they got their own degrees dated the day they convoked, which was a Saturday. So the school dated it the Saturday. Some went as far as digging up some degrees online. I saw somebody who uploaded uh, uh, to Twitter, Ibe Kachiku's university degree, or some issue about Ibe Kachiku, and what I had at first class. I don't want to go into that. And he said, oh, see, if you look at the date, it was a Sunday. So leave Peter or be uh, alone. It's quite interesting, but, but the... The man, the man himself has also had some things to say uh, about this. Because one of his aides, uh, his, um, uh, one of his aides, actually, uh, his media aide, Valentine Obiem, he's not the one who published this, um, requested to publish his Bachelor of Arts uh, degree certificate. And uh, Peter B, we are told, disagreed with his aides on the need to publish the certificate. He disagreed with them. Uh, according to what we hear, the former Anambra State Governor um, uh, said that the possession of paper qualification is not uh, and cannot become the measure of wisdom and intelligence. All right? This is what uh, we're hearing. Uh, he's saying that the possession of paper qualification is not and cannot become the measure of wisdom and intelligence. Just giving the background to this. You know, so we're told that his media aide, Mercy, had on several occasions advised Peter B, his boss, uh, that it is necessary for him to, public, to publish his certificate so as to lay to rest the public debate concerning whether he attended a university or not uh, and obtained any uh, legitimate degree. Now, some people, have, having seen that he studied philosophy, you know, because he had a second-class lower division in philosophy, have also gone ahead to compare him with the likes of Atiku Abubakar, Mercy, in fact, Reno Mokri, who is a self-styled table shaker. When he was a Buhari mentor, everybody was on the same table with him. Uh, but now he's become an Obito mentor. <laughs> People who, who were with him have now deserted him. Uh, it's a funny way social media goes. But Reno said, oh, you know, and he is just one example of uh, those who have been saying these things. So I'll pick him because he's prominent online. He said that uh, Kwankweso has a PhD in water, water engineering from India. Atiku has a master's in international relations from the UK. Tinubu has a BSc in accounting, allegedly from Chicago. This are, these are Reno's words. Uh, in contrast, Tobi has a bachelor's degree in philosophy. Who is better qualified educationally? So trying to, um, you know, you know, say e e in indirectly that uh, Obi may not be qualified as qualified as the rest because he went to school to study philosophy. Some of the comments uh, are quite interesting. <laughs> I'll tell you what but, one person said, um, just to read one comment. Okay, yeah, I'll read that later. Well, 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 so quickly, I mean, if, if you look at all of this, it, it's a very good thing that, first of all, you have Nigerians asking questions and they are concerned. I think it's a development. A lot of people have appraised that. 
uh, there seemed to be some progress right here in our democratic process. Because prior to now, uh, Nigerians have been described as docile. Uh, Nigerians are very docile. They don't participate in the electoral process. But it's a good thing to see, um, you know, people waking up and questioning those who are going to be calling the shots. For instance, you're vying for the position or you're vying to become the president of a country, governor, chairman, and what have you. And Nigerians are asking questions about some critical issue. However, we also need to understand that the Constitution, basic requirement for you to become president, the Constitution says that they have to be citizen of Nigeria by birth and have attained at the age of 35, and that's it. And they are members of a political party and sponsored by pol that political party and have been educated up to at least school certificate level or its equivalent. And so, you know, that's it, really. I know a lot of persons have actually raised questions. It brings us back to the issue of, uh, you know, the emphasis that we've placed on the certificate. And no one is saying that that's really bad, having a degree, a master's degree, and of course, getting to the peak of it, which is, you know, a PhD. But um, it's also another conversation to say whether or not that translates to good governance and having, you know, policies that will favor the masses is a different conversation. But with this, I, I don't think that it should be a big issue because, um, first of all, Peter Obi belongs to a political party. And before you actually begin to campaign or vie for it, you know, contest for the election, there should be some process of verification. I don't think that, I mean, for instance, if you're, if you're going to you know, apply for anything, I mean, there's a process. So I, I don't think that this should be a question if this is raised. The relevant quarters should be ready, up and ready, which I think that, that would have already happened because before he you know, was given the ticket to become uh, you know, a presidential flag bearer of a certain party, the process, the checks and you know, balances would have been done, checking his certificate and his background and all of that, and then they would definitely say his credit worthy. I mean, he is worthy of becoming a flag bearer. And getting to the part where you have INEC also, you know, bringing out the list. This is like a final list. I'm sure that there should be a process, uh, you know, verification of all of the documents that have been presented and to ascertain whether or not uh, these documents are false or not. So, um, also, it's a good thing, like I say, and, and Nsuka is not, you know, outside of Nigeria. Nsuka is here in Nigeria, and so it's not difficult. If there's any question, it's, it's questionable, because that's also another issue, the issue of forgery. So if you look at the issue of all oh, the data at the time it was issued and what have you, and all of the, uh, you know, discrepancies with the certification, then it's okay to approach the school. Uh, you know, letters and petitions should be written, and, 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 you know, Nigerians deserve to know the best. And so if anything is quite different, then it's okay. We remember a certain time uh, where a very prominent uh, she was Minister of Finance, right? And, and the issue uh, Alison Madweke, if I'm not mistaken, on top of it, the issue of you know, the NYC certification and what have you. But I know that uh, because once upon a time I was really saddled with the responsibility of mining uh, my mom's secretariat. And so we, we would do letters. So basically I manage letters, I type the letters, and sometimes you're addressing a letter to certain, you know, in a person, maybe an organization or whatever you. I could be doing the letter on a Saturday, but usually because the so is respected, Mondays to Fridays are work day, it's important to backdate. And so it's that you're doing a letter on a Saturday, but you backdate it to Friday. So it just feels like, okay, it's an official date. However, uh, the date of graduation, because we, we know that we live in a climb where at the time where you graduate and from the time your certificate is being issued, it's not the same. <laughs> so you could probably graduate in 2015 and you have, you know, a convocation in 2018 and your certificate could be issued maybe in 2021 or 2022. But that's it. Moving away from that, uh, for the want of time, Aisha Buhari has celebrated her daughter-in-law. I mean, it's something that has continued to trickle down. It's a conversation that has been on for, you know, the past days uh, because she celebrates, uh, she celebrated her daughter's in-law's graduation in the midst of ASU strike, of course. Now, to be very logical, is there any law that prohibits uh, anybody, anybody, whether you are of the elite or not of the elite, uh, to acquire an education or to celebrate anyone that's outside of the country. No, but we understand where Nigerians are coming from. I mean, like, we, like I mentioned rightly, it's in the midst of the strike. 
and that has generated a lot of bores and talks and energies and flowing back and forth and people are not excited especially when she's the wife of the president and you know the president is the president and everyone is expecting that oh the president should be concerned but generally, as much as it might not be within her sphere, even though, you know, there might just be a little, some sort of, you know, influence, not officially. But I think that it's just the general issue that we're faced with. If it's important to us, we will pay attention to it. And that's what it is. So every other time we find ourselves outside of the country, you know, getting admission, uh, trying to uh, further our education, because we don't even believe in the system that we have. Is the system walkable? I mean, there are several questions, and, and really, should we be worried about this? Sh should this really be a conversation? Mm, these are some of the questions that are being asked and also begging for answers. But to say that one does not understand, you know, the consent of Nigerians and those who are speaking, because some people have described this particular act as ins insensitive. We also remember that, you know, a speaker or a recently also t took a picture uh, where he was in Harvard or thereabout, if I'm not mistaken. And then, of course, he came to apologize, say, you know what, it wasn't a deliberate act to say. But I think it really hurts a lot of persons who see this happen because everyone is not, you know, uh, blessed with the same resources. I mean, and down, not everyone can afford to have an education outside of this country. And so uh, it might just be very saddening when people sit back and watch that those who should have some level of influence and control to ensure that the system, the education system works. I want to wake up one day, maybe, I hope I live to that time, where we have a country that you have people, I mean, citizens of the United States, citizens from Germany, France, and what parts of the country come to Nigeria to acquire education. That's the kind of country I'm hoping to see. And I hope to see it, you know, I hope I'm alive to see it eventually. And if that doesn't happen, I hope it happens, you know, sometime. Because it's really, really saddening, you know, if you want to look at it. But everyone has a right, you know, to express themselves. Movement is what we're talking about. And there's no law that's restricting anybody not to. And so it might not just be your problem. But morally, it might be a concern. Kofi, um, I know that uh, you, you probably would have something to say about this. Yes, Marcia. Uh, for want of time, let's, let's move to the next, uh, next story. Um, of course, I'm sure you, you must have seen the, um, uh, the, the, the pictures and this video in particular of a police officer uh, who, who was bleeding. A female police officer was bleeding from, from, from the head, you know, had some blood coming down her, her face. And uh, this happened to because the story began unraveling, and you're seeing some some of the pictures of uh, this. You know, if you watch the video, I don't know if you have that. Uh, it, it it's really really um, a gory one. One would wonder what happened to this police officer. Well, of course, it's no longer a news that um, Nigerians on on Thursday um, uh, fought at the deployment of uh, police orderly uh, for protection of a university professor after the officer. Uh, was allegedly as assaulted by the university uh, uh, um, uh, professor. You can see this police only sitting on the floor, bleeding from her face. Um, she was assigned to a female professor, uh, identified as Zainab Duke Abiola, uh, who was said to have been admitted to a hospital. Um, she was admitted to hospital after being tortured on the orders of her principal. You can see her lying on the hospital bed there, uh, allegedly on the orders of her principal she was tortured um we hear this happened so in the federal capital territory abuja um and what happened we hear that the police officer was uh, assigned to the professor by the police force headquarters in abuja you know they've been saying that uh, um, you know i think some time ago one of the the uh, plethora of uh, C, uh, igps we've had said oh no more uh, use of police personnel for private uh, 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 protection you know, that's not the use of the police. But you can see this one has exposed them, uh, that this woman was assigned a police orderly right from the force headquarters. Uh, we hear it happened around Area 11 Axis, and the video clips showed, like I said, the woman police officer sitting on the floor and bleeding. But I, I want to go to what, because the police was, were called in on this, you know, and mentioned the police for relations officer, uh, force headquarters Abuja. He's been uh, on Twitter. He tweets a lot. 
you know, must about almost everything. Uh, Prince Olumuiwa Adejobi is his name, and uh, he swiftly, um, you know, tweeted about this, saying they were on top of the situation. The lady has been um, uh, reached by the police, and uh, they're doing everything to bring justice to bear on this matter. But Nigerians are not having it. They were saying we want to see pictures of her uh, in police custody. After all, if it was some other person, you may uh, you may have put their pictures out. To, to show you, may have paraded them even before the press. And uh, he promptly put up pictures of um, the professor writing a statement, um, you know, in police station, etc., etc. So I think they've been investigating this uh, for some days. And I joined are concerned about, uh, you know, the fact that this professor being the VIP who was assigned an orderly from the force headquarters might be allowed to get away with a slap on her wrist. You know, and the Nigerians say, you know, we don't want this to happen, justice for the police officer. Well, this is what the police public relations officer for headquarters Abuja said on Twitter yesterday. He said, quote, uh, the grievous assault on woman police officer IGP condemns act, orders express prosecution of case. Uh, he went on to say as professor, uh, other culprits arrested, uh, okay, that's as professor, other culprits arrested, that's a writer to that. He said the inspector general of police, uh, IGP uh, has strongly condemned the grievous assault of a police officer, uh, Inspector Teju Moses, by her principal, who is a legal practitioner, human rights activist, Professor Zainab Diukabiola, and her domestic uh, staff comprising the housemaid, uh, one Rebecca Enechido, and a male suspect currently at large. It says Zainab Duke, an NBC born activist, grievously assaulted her oddly in a company of some accomplices on Tuesday, 20th September 2022 at her residence in Garki Abuja due to the refusal of the orderly to breach profess professional ethics by carrying out menial and domestic chores at her house. The IGP has directed the express uh, prosecution of the arrested suspects who are currently in police custody uh, as a preliminary investigation shows overwhelming evidence of culpability on the part of the professor and her domestic staff. So, I mean, lots of people said, okay, fine, we're happy. You know, we're happy, but we hope that this case would not uh, enter voicemail, like we say in Nigeria. Well, um, so Kofi, uh, th this is really saddening. We're at a time where we're talking about, uh, we're saying, and please brutality. But if you look at it, let's even get back to the foundation, just like you have mentioned. And so it's a situation where there you have about 80%, according to the reports that's been put out, of Nigerian police officers actually uh, providing personal security for prominent people in Nigeria. The IGP had lamented this. And so it leaves about 20% you know, of police officers to police the entire you know, country. At the end of the day, what's even been left? This is actually not what it is. And so constantly, we have contributed. It's a combined effort. It's a combination uh, you know, of the effort of Nigerians, prominent Nigerians or the elite, if you want to say, you know, because it, it ranges from the bishops, honorable members, what have you, everyone wants uh, a police officer to actually protect them. But what's the reason why you have you know, the police created? The police was created to ensure that there's peace and order maintained in a civil you know, society, and that's what it is. And over time, we've also seen the involvement of the military. The military has no business in a civil dispensation. I mean, they were created to protect the country against external attacks and defending territorial integrity. But over time, we have subjected the Nigerian military to you know, harassing people. You take, I mean, somebody's owing you. You now invite the military, military officer to go and you know, intervene. That's not what they were meant for. Even we see the military involved in policing civil cases. I mean, th that's not what they were meant for. And now to even think that the police that was created, I mean, the creation of the police to ensure that uh, you know, they are maintaining order in the civil dispensation. But now you have a group of persons who have decided to take a chunk of these officers to provide personal security for them and their families. But let's even look at it holistically. Now, imagine that the police is able to you know, provide security and ensure that the environment is entirely safe, free and safe. There will be no need for us to have you know, a police officer, you as an honorable member, you as a bishop and what have you, to, to be in need of a personal uh, police, I mean security, now having uh, the police providing personal security for you and your family. So if we're able to address the issue generally, everyone can go about their businesses without it. Now, not also to look at the fact that the police is also grappling with the issue of personnel 
the police is understaffed. As of, you know, 2022, according to the report that's made available, 371,000, that's the number of police officers that we have, if I'm not mistaken, and that's the report, like I mentioned, is out there. To police how many million persons? 211 million persons. That's a lot. But we take a break now because we're out of time, and when we return, it will be time for us to uh, go through the front pages of our national dailies. We call it Off the Press. Please stay with us.